The first human civilizations appeared about 5,000 years ago in the Middle East. The first cities, the first religions, the first kings, a radically new form of social organization. And then writing, which took man into history. The 20th century archaeological digs established Sumer in Mesopotamia, today's southern Iraq, as the unique home of this revolution. But in the year 2000, a treasure surged up from a valley lost in the mountains of southern Iran. Magnificent stone vases bore witness to the presence of another cradle of civilization no one had even suspected existed. The oldest Mesopotamian legends had indeed evoked an ancient kingdom called Arata, protected by high mountains. But no archaeologist had ever found any trace of it, and for some, Arata was nothing but a myth. The Chlorite Vases It's a step construction, but it's, it's huge, it's gigantic, gigantic, 400 meters by 400 meters. In Mesopotamia and Elam, pyramids of this sort have been discovered on numerous sites. We believe that they were religious monuments. In Mesopotamia, they're called ziggurats but the oldest yet found dates back to the end of the third millennium pre-Christ, and none have a base longer than 120 meters. With the first level at nearly 400 meters long, this one would be several centuries older and significantly larger than any of the other known constructions of this type. This gigantic city, emerging bit by bit from the ground, was the center of a vast kingdom that prospered here 5,000 years ago. An enormous missing piece in the great puzzle of the origins of our civilizations. This is a civilization totally was ignored, totally was forgotten in the, uh, in the history. And now it's coming up little by little, little by little, it's just emerging from the, you know, from the shadows coming up. That is magnificent. This discovery turns all of Middle Eastern archaeology upside down. We were, that is the entrance, because on the, on the right-hand side, uh, you see the, the facade of the entrance wall. Apparently, the entrance was turning a little bit, uh, about 90 degrees uh, in a curvature, you entering inside this construction. This year we could penetrate about 20 meters or 15 meters inside this uh, gigantic building. The one who lived, uh, built this one and lived in this one, in this monumental uh, architecture, uh, was not an ordinary, uh, you know, person. It was a higher class, a ruling class, maybe the king, maybe the king of uh, Arata. This edifice was an enormous citadel comprising two levels. This architecture, exceptional for the period, almost certainly inspired the motives on these vases. And for the archaeologists, it's one further proof demonstrating the degree of sophistication attained by this civilization. Among the seal impressions, Holly Pittman finds new proof of the originality of their talent. To her great surprise, she finds a type of motive she's never seen before. This is a very highly developed style with its own iconography, its own forms. And in my opinion, um, we have two or three master craftsmen who have um, tremendous imagination and who are creating images that are just full of life and vitality. The style of these seals, as sophisticated as that of the chloride objects, demonstrates the extraordinary creativity of the artists of the Halil Valley.
For Professor Majid Zadeh, this exceptional talent might be one of the keys of the influence that this civilization exercised over its epoch. You have never seen elsewhere in the entire region their imagination, their the artistic value they have used on this. You know, when uh, a merchandise goes from one place to another, even today, the ideas goes with it. Some of the recurrent elements in this iconography seem, in effect, to illustrate legends that we see appearing much later in Mesopotamian imagery. The legend of Etana is only documented in Mesopotamia at the very end of the third millennium BC. It tells of how a serpent finds revenge against an eagle for devouring its young. The reptile is advised by a god to hide in a carcass to surprise its enemy. I mean, this representation of a cow and an eagle attacking and a confrontation between two snakes and one eagle. It came to my mind, this must be the story of Etana. 600 years ago, 500 years ago, before Mesopotamians represented on their seal impressions. Likewise, the Gilgamesh epic, perhaps the most renowned Mesopotamian legend, there is the character of a scorpion man guarding the mountain entrance to the land of the dead. But in all of Mesopotamia, only one image has been found representing it. In the Rood Valley, the Scorpion Man appears on dozens of different vases. For the professor, all these signs suggest that this culture developed before that of Mesopotamia and that it could have influenced the latter in many domains. When the results from the site's geophysical readings arrive to Eric Fouache, the professor's intuition seems to be confirmed. We can see quite clearly here in red and brown a bedrock, which is the topography upon which the people of Konar Sandal first settled. Whereas we've got a dozen meters of deposits on top of it, which are very probably, in their entirety, archaeological deposits. About a meter down, we see the appearance of geometric structures that couldn't be anything other than walls. And at two meters, we can see that the anomalies aren't arranged in the same manner. That shows quite clearly that we've got several generations of remains, and hence an ancient foundation for this site. The ground underneath Kuna Sandal might well enclose traces of occupation long preceding the most ancient Mesopotamian remains. The geomorphologists told us we have about 12 meters of cultural deposit uh, below the surface. Therefore, it's not 5,000 years ago they settled here. Maybe they settled 10,000 years ago. We don't know yet. <laughs> This discovery is only revealed at the very end of the 2005 campaign. On the site, nearly all the trenches have been sealed, with the exception of Mr. Soleimani's at the palace entrance. And it's there that an incredible dramatic turn of events takes place. Hi, Doctor. Professor, we've just found a piece of baked brick here. Could you come over? On this piece of baked brick, the first discovered on the site, there are clearly carved out characters. There is no possible doubt that it's an ancient inscription. Hmm. Give it to me, please. Is it you who found this? That's very good. Thank you very much. Everyone had hoped but never dared believe that they'd have it in their hands. This civilization had also invented a form of writing at the dawn of the third millennium BC. 
right on the top, on the latest layer, we have this writing. And as I said, we have 12 meters of cultural remains below this. And uh, chances are we find earlier version. And uh, you never know. One day maybe writing begins from here. Um, I don't, I'm not claiming anything, but uh, I mean, you never know. Um, really, it's frightening. Uh, I don't dare to say what changes this site is going to bring because no one will believe it. Perhaps we'll never know if this city is really the one the Mesopotamians called Arata. But no one can any longer claim that Mesopotamia was the unique cradle of civilization in the Middle East. This other cradle has already regained its place in the memory of mankind. <laughs>